It's time to jump into game number two here uh -oh. between Marine King Prime and SKMC. We're going to be mm. moving over to MLG Antigua Shipyard, and we'll see if MC is good. Did you just throw that at me? No, I didn't. Listen, Marcus, <laughs> it is going to be on Antigua Shipyard. The choice three, of the map is OGSMC, and by the way, watch this. Oh! That was nice. Moving on to more exciting things. The map is going to be Antigua Shipyard. Now, this is an interesting decision because ordinarily you consider it a macro map, but Marine King Prime is known to two racks on this map very regularly. His unpredictability is so, so key. In the bottom right corner, the man who won the MLG Winter Championship up against one of the best Terran killers of all time. It is Marine King Prime. And in northwest position, as the Blue Protoss must win this one in order to be back. But in a group, this is actually one of the more important matches that he will play. Wanting to come out on top, give it up for SKMC. I, I literally cannot wait to see Marine King Prime do his two-rack style on this map, or actually on any map for that matter. His two-rack style is a very clever rearrangement. He actually delays his orbital command by two SCVs. Rather than building it on 15, he builds it on 17. What does he do with that 150 minerals? He builds his second barracks much faster, when ordinarily that push would arrive at the Protoss front door maybe at around 5 minutes and 45 seconds, maybe around 6 minutes. His gets there at 5.20, 5.30. This is before the Protoss player has enough time to get the warp gate research started. Now let's watch that gas timing from MKP. He should be building it around 14 or 15 to do his trademark two racks. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on that. And also MKP, as we mentioned earlier, was some very, very aggressive style play against Protoss uh, at the Winter Arena. And uh, is he going to go ahead and do it? Or what are we going to have come out of? Uh, I mean, I mean, he might just be going for a one barracks command center. That would break my heart, but that's OK. We'll go over to SKMC, who's doing a very standard one gate, one gas, almost certainly going to be going for one Zealot, two Stalkers, and a Fast Expo. Yeah, it looks like Marine King might actually go ahead and go for a quick CC here. No gas. The Rax is going to be finishing up. And uh, he is sitting with a lot of minerals and looking like he might actually do that. Over on the other side, as you mentioned, we're going to get... Oh, he is going to go for the uh, early orbital um, on the normal timing. So, you know, SK is going to go with something similar. SKMC over here just with his gateway. Uh, We've got a Zealot wow. coming out, Cybernetics core coming out. And uh, he's just got his three on gas. Now let's talk a little bit about deviations that you can do at this point as the Protoss player. Very typically, we'll still see a one gate expand, but rather than a lot of stalkers or a lot of zealots, the Protoss player will build many sentries, devoting all the gas to that sentry production, and as a result, ending up with a very large ground force. And did I just see? Oh, yes, indeed. MC cancels his zealot at 90%, hmm. starts his warp gate, and looks very much so intending to do that expand. Would very much so not be surprised to see him do the three gate um, mass sentry push. And he decided to go ahead and uh, put in the stalker there. The probe is going to go out, and I think the next will go down here shortly. Of course, we have two racks following up with this, and uh, I guess we'll probably see MKP go for a double gas here off yeah. of this as well. Um, meanwhile, inside the other base, finally Marine King Prime making up. And because that Zealot uh, is not there, of course, that will mean this SCV remains in the space just a little bit longer, but more importantly, sees that the warp gate is underway and, of course, sees that Nexus building at the natural. MC has let that gateway get to 80% production with two units now and canceled. In the unit tab, we see that he has only probes. This is a nice way to convince the Terran player that you're building more than you actually are. At the same time, though, we can clearly see what Marine King Prime is doing. But from MC's point of view, there's two main deviations that the Terran player will do. One is to go three racks like MKP's doing and get a lot of refineries up, going for a relatively fast tech play, or going for five or six racks and doing a huge Marine push. At this point, MC really has to begin accounting for both. He has Ooh. to make sure that he has that sort of good defense up. And look at that, Marcus. Double eBay. Yeah, double eBay means that he really wants to put a lot of focus into these Marines. He wants to mentor each and every single one that is out on the field. And this is actually a style that is quite exciting to watch Marine King Prime play simply because his control is really good. His yeah, yeah. macro gets a great, great showcase. There we see the tech lab going down on barracks number one. And he'll immediately start both plus one and uh, shields. And there we go. Um, as we got it going up. And the guys, quick reminder to vote. You can text 22333 or tweet at poll, and you're either going to want to put Marine King or MC for the winner that you hope to see walk away with this series.
Now, just a second ago, we were talking about the two things that MC's worried about, either a fast tech play or a big mass Marine play. And right now, he's seeing a very late bunker, only Marines. This is almost always a sign of a player who's going for a mass Marine focus. So MC will more often than not be getting a little bit leery. We see that robotics facility coming up. Looks like he is just making sure that he can get those observers up just in case. We do see that swell of sentries. No commitment from MC for any attack, but he continues to add the sentries on indicating that he may want to push around 8.30 or 9. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that as well as we get both gases on uh, MC's natural occupied. More sentries are coming out. He's just positioned these two stalkers at the front of his opponent's base. And you can see that Marine King Prime is making a nice little wall here to prevent any additional uh, units from making their way in or any probes for scouting. But he is completely covered. Uh, plus one is uh, nearing completion over on the other side. And an armory is going up right behind that. So he can quickly continue that upgrade path that he has set himself on. MC continuing to poke and prod. Now, at this point, if I'm in MC's shoes, I'm saying, OK, a mass marine attack would have happened already. This is almost certainly a relatively fast tech play. Uh, could it be upgrades? Could it be fast drop? Either way, I really need to worry about the drop. That's why we see those stalkers pulling back in the main base. We see stalkers positioning themselves at the backside. 8.30 is about as early as drops can come, and it would, of course, be pretty much only Marines. MC is forced to play very defensively, but we see that observer moving across. He will soon enough see exactly what he's up against. Three more yep. gateways go down from MC. Almost certainly a Twilight Council soon to follow. And you know, one thing I want to point out about MC's play, and we saw it in the last game, we did didn't really showcase it, but he had observers everywhere, not just yep. on the map, but actually off the map in those key places where a medevac might fly by or could possibly uh, surprise him. And we, he had two observers come out before he built his first immortal. I'm sorry, three observers snuck out wow. there. He must have chronoed one before he built that first immortal. And you know, it guarantees him that coverage that uh, you know that he needs versus some heavy drop play. Now you heard me just say probably going to be going for a twilight. Council. This is stylistically consistent. MC very often when he floods that many gateways early follows up with that Twilight Council play, but think about what he just spotted. A lot of upgrades, virtually no attacking from Marine King Prime. He is worried about being pushed very soon. Suddenly we see a lot of Immortals come out getting the Robotics Bay as well. MC needs to account for the fact that a big push could come at any second. Sure, he is taking his third base now, but at this point MC is, has to play very cautiously. He can't do any sort of cute finesse play with a bunch of blink harass. He needs to take this Marine King Prime Army head on as it's just starting to move out now. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's going to be uh, one thing that's going to be really, really tough here is just the amount of sentries there are and the positioning of obviously the natural and the third. The third's going up right now. If uh, Marine King Prime moves out, it doesn't look like he's going to, but he's got some medevacs position. No, he's definitely going to take his army across. And while he marches, let's take a quick look at those results, Sean. As uh, we have have seen, oh, it is 50-50. Better get over there and vote wow. right now, neck and neck, just like this game. Looks like the factory is hitting the scout, trying to catch things a little bit out of position. MKP also in the center of the map. And was that MC killing off his own probe there? It certainly sounded like I, it. Looks I, like the stalkers on the retreat path at Forge. Now trying to get that plus one armor upgrade. And this is the pressure that MC was worried about. Brilliant timing by Marine King Prime. Right as the expansion finishes, before that expansion has had time to mine. MC with those six warp gates now trying to get as many units out as he can. And we see Marine King taking his third in the midst of all this. And brilliant timing. 2-2 two, two, about to finish five seconds away. And wow, 2-2 two, two Terran units versus 0-0 zero, zero Protoss. Yeah, I mean, the one Colossus is here, which really would help them. Oh, and we got a drop moving up into the main. He can just run this army back. Oh, there's a couple of stalkers up here. He's going to warp in a few zealots as well. Oh. Immediately doing a lot of damage. Oh, and On the, the Colossus oh. popped up. Perfect. Perfect positioning by MC with the Colossus in the main base. The Colossus pops out with those two two units ripping apart the basic gateway units from MC. The lone Colossus oh, falls down, wow. and now MKP keeping unit counts low continues to push. The other Colossus steps onto the high ground. Will it fall too? It's down to 20 health. 10. See you later, Colossus. Oh my gosh, such an effective drop right there for MKP. He got a lot done, and that immediately is going to 
have put, caused some sort of reaction out of MC. I mean, his Colossus count just suddenly plummeted from two, his third one on his way to zero, and now he'll just be left with one. That's gonna allow Marine King to get his third up. Right now, he delayed the mining over there due to those battles that took place. So they are about even on bases. The Viking production has already begun. So even if more Colossus come out, like you mentioned, these upgraded Marines and Marauders are going to just melt through some of these gateway units. And there we go, 3-3 three, three on the way. 3-3 three, three on the way, and what is Protoss at? Zero, one upgrade. We always list attack first, followed by armor, the 2-2 two, two Marine King Prime Force moving forward, and it looks like MC sees it, is immediately going to pull back. He tries to do a little hero zealot micro action, but the army from MC is a little bit too small. This is exactly what Marine King Prime likes to do. He keeps the armies small, so when he splits up his units, it's too difficult for Protoss to adjust properly. And there's the scan. Oh, there's the advance forward. Some nice force fields, but the slow zealots caught off guard. Oh, and you know what? The Colossus is going to do nothing, but there's only three stalkers in this mix. The force field will allow these bio move units to move back and really just nail the zealots. And at this point, that fight really went in Marine King's favor, but four force fields preventing the retreat. The sentries are going down. Oh, oh the Manor, Manor mules. mules! And there we see the Immortals go, and he thinks he's got enough. He picks up some hurt units, finishes off a few of those stalkers, and so much damage to be done here by Marine King Prime. Oh, real micro by MKP, and this is the money situation for the Terran player. No matter where he attacks, Protoss must have his army tightly packed. In the main base, we see nothing there to defend. A single medevac would do unthinkable damage in MC's main. Yep, but he is not going to go quite yet. And you know what? Marine King just backs off. He doesn't force a fight uh, with the unit Orphans coming up. The High Templar are out, which means he's got Archons on the field as well. And he just takes a fourth base. He feels like he's already at a comfortable uh, advantage here. He's got a ton of medevacs. His bio army is looking very, very nicely. And yes, just like you said, Sean, the threat of drops now is just going to be a real, real thorn in MC's side as he is uh, with a nice little army, about 30 supply ahead at this point in time. I mean, that is just a stunning lead by MKP. And keep in mind, not only does he have a supply lead, but his infrastructure is completely done. His upgrades about to finish 3-3. No more money needs to be spent there. He has all the vital structures done. All he needs to do is macro and expand. Meanwhile, MC still struggling to get his upgrades up. Storm has just finished. It's all going to come down to the perfect placement of a single storm. And this is going to be so important. There are no ghosts out as far as I can tell. There is the load up. He's just going to go ahead and back off. But he, he drops in the back of this third, which looks like exactly what he's going to do. Oh Feedbacks goodness. on the medevacs will not kill them. So he'll still be able to get a drop and no other units. He could possibly drop a storm as well. But he's going to go all the way around that backside. And will he react quick enough? MC is going to have to be fast on the trigger for this one. Oh, there, oh, looks like there's it's a, a bait, Marcus. And it looks like there's the drop, and it looks like the medevacs uh -oh. continue to step forward, but oh, they have already ripped apart most of those workers. But here's the real danger, the push at the front, Marcus. There's a small force moving forward, a single storm. Can he pick off those Templar? He does successfully do so. Are there any storms left? There's one left in the back, and he's definitely oh, going to need all oh, the Colossus oh. on the cliff. Moves a little too far forward. He gets taken down. All the zealots, no shields. They completely get melted. We have more Vikings from the side, but it will not matter. Another warp it does occur, and that means Marine King Prime is going to have to move back just a little bit. Fortunately for him, he's handling these zealots quite nicely. The real threat, I mean, honestly, that Archon that's just beating away on the medevacs, but look at him as he just moves back and forth. Now Ghosts on the field, EMPs in hand. Oh, my God. God, Marine King Prime looking unstoppable. Stepping forward to that third base, the third of MC. Still recovering a brilliant storm from MC. Keeps his heart rate alive for now, but the Colossus out of position. It will not be around long, but MC with a brilliant force back continues to put pressure. Colossus falls, MC hanging on by a thread. Yeah, Zealot's the only thing left on the field right now to fight off this bio army as more and more Marauders come out. And with the Marines, you should have no problem cleaning them up. We saw a great EMP there that got rid of a bunch of the Archons. No oh. ghost left, though. He's going to have to run. It's going to be only Zealot Archon. 
or MC from here on out. Now he needs okay. to keep them alive. The one trailing will fall. The probes in the battle. Ooh, it does not look good for the Protoss GSL champ now. Marine King Prime has been training so hard for this tournament. It is all paying off. The fully upgraded Mass Marine Marauder Force in small numbers, just the way he likes it. He is microing perfectly, and MC can barely get above 100 supply. I mean, he does not want to get second place any longer after the win at the Winter Arena. Marine King Prime has championship in the eyes, and right now he is playing like a true champion. MC, no slouch at all, has really, really been handled throughout this game. If you're looking forward to getting Tastos' thoughts on this result as well. As here uh -oh. we see the gateways under fire now, and this army is going to be backed up into the corner, but he should be able to handle it, no problem. Oh, Archons, Zealots alike, all falling. More reinforcements than non-stop rally from Marine King at 75 workers to the 56 of MC. The single Colossus tries to be controlled well, but it falls, and there's the sad face, the good game, and the stunning victory by Marine King Prime. Total domination start to finish in both matches. I mean, again, we just see the bio dominance that Marine King holds wow. within. And it is amazing to think that, you know, why doesn't every Terran just emulate? I mean, I cannot say it enough. An attacking, aggressive style, the hardest style to master in any game. With every attack, there's an easy way to lose, and there's Marine King Prime, he just oh, hugs Oh, you know what, MC. he's sad because he wanted to see him dance, and so did I, Sean. But it looks like we'll have to wait a few more rounds to we see will. those fancy moves from MC. I'm sure it'll happen, MC, I mean, still, um, although MKP just looked so good, you know, MC, you can't count him out. Let's go ahead and take a look over at the two suave casting Archon members, Tastosis, to ask, how'd you think of Marine, King, Marine King's performance in that match? You know, Marine King is playing just so well in this series. I'm really impressed with his play here so far. Uh, MC, a little bit of an overextension, taking that third so quickly. I love the quick observer scouting, but M he just, when he got dropped in his main, too much damage done, lost half his army in the low ground, lost a Colossus going up to fight the drop. He just kind of fell apart there. And as soon as you lose any group of units against Marine King, his incredible micro and his incredible aggression are going to take you out. Yeah, you know, he's just so good at controlling his army. Um, it's not an easy thing to do to control a Terran army like that, but the way he was kiting, uh, there were moments where you could see the Colossi were trying to chase down um, the infantry, so he just runs back and kills the Zealots. Then suddenly when the Zealots are gone, Stalkers uh, and the rest of those units are just going to die. So then he goes back and chases him back again. Now, that map is one of these maps where the fourth base is pretty tough for everybody to get. Yeah. Um, as you can see, Marine King acquired the fourth base in the center of the map, and he just made sure MC didn't get one. Pretty straightforward, but really nice control from Marine King. He's definitely in good shape. Thanks so much, guys. I mean, it is true. The, the, the control was just bar none stunning. Keep in mind, that is the first match of yep. the day. Coming up after this, we got a little bit of Dong Regu versus Naniwa. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is going to be a killer matchup. Probably one of the best ones to come out of that group is a very, very dominant Zerg takes on a Protoss who continues to be an up-and-comer. How will these two styles clash? Well, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we return, we will find out. I'm DJ Wheat. I'm Day 9. Don't go anywhere, because Day 1 of the MLG Winter Championship has just started.